Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I, I like to step back and talk about the original purpose of the law. This is one of the most uh, far-sighted, in fact, visionary statutes passed in, in the last hundred years. Uh, I've always thought that the people who had the foresight to set aside Central Park in Manhattan mm -hmm. at a time when that island was very sparsely populated uh, and to preserve that land uh, is one of the great acts of genius in our country. And of course, the national parks fit into the same category. Ken Burns said they're America's best idea. Uh, they're one of the few things we can do around here that's permanent, as permanent as anything can be. Laws and statutes come and go, but once land is set aside for the public, and it is set aside for the public, uh, it's, it's there uh, permanently. And I think it's important to realize that the funding source here, the offshore oil uh, uh, and gas revenues, those resources belong to the public. And we're using that money that comes from property that's owned by boys and girls in Bangor, Maine, and people that live in Alaska, and people that live in San Francisco, or Alabama, or New York. Those are their assets, and we are allowing people to, to use them for commercial purposes. There are fees involved, and turning that money back into uh, access for people to the public is absolutely essential, it seems to me. Um, this whole discussion to me is a, is a great big example of the failure of Congress to adequately address the country's needs. Mr. Watson, you made an eloquent case for adequately funding the national parks, not raiding the Land and Water Conservation Fund to do what Congress should be doing in the budget of the national parks? Or how about this, funding the Highway Trust Fund? That would be a good idea. It goes broke in 30 days. We've patched it, I don't know, 10 or 11 times. We, we, it, 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 Senator Warren just whispered, embarrassing, and that's what it is. But we should not be, uh, we're like a searchlight searching for pots of money that can be sucked up to meet the needs that we ought to be doing in the ordinary course of budgeting. Uh, and and uh, by the way, Mr. Connor, I, I don't let the parks off altogether. I've gone after Secretary Jewell about the failure to collect fees adequately at the parks. And, and you need to modernize that system because a lot of people that come to the national parks, I know people come to Acadia, tell me we'd like to pay, but we couldn't figure out where the entrance was. So we need to, we, we need to work on that. But uh, uh, I just think the fundamental question here is once we start saying, well, this is a slush fund for covering deferred maintenance, then forget it. We we've, we've may as well repeal the statute and name it something else uh, because it's not going to be living up to its purpose. And this country is growing. And, I, and I, it's also interesting, this is a regional issue because it's very different in the West. I was just talking to Senator Risch from Idaho. Two-thirds of the land in Idaho is owned by the federal government. That's not true in the East where uh, public lands are so important uh, in terms of people's access to the out of doors, people's recreational access. And the other thing we need to remember is this money isn't just for big, exp you know, for Yosemite or Acadia National Park. You know, I met recently with some friends in Maine, Steve Balboni, Tracy Willette, and Denise LeBlanc. They are local park officials in Bath, Maine, Bangor, Maine, Skowhegan, Maine, and they run summer programs for kids and they have recreational opportunities. They, have, uh, they work with the school lunch program. This is, this is real important. It's, it's not just, we're not hugging trees here, we're hugging kids uh, nationwide. And, and I think that's very important. And, 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 and finally, I, I'm passionate about this because my wife and I are RVers. And we've stayed in some sensational state parks, Dead Horse Point State Park in Utah, uh, state parks in Georgia, uh, uh, state parks in Washington State, national parks all over the country. Um, this is who we are, and it's one of the greatest things about this country. And I, I'm just uh, very uh, intent, as you might be able to tell, uh, that we not, in effect, convert this statute, this far-seeing visionary act of genius by our forebears in this institution, to a maintenance fund uh, to fix roads and curbsides in, in our 
uh, in our nation's parks and, and in our community parks across the country. Um, I've, I've uh, used up all my time, um, so if you can find a question in there, you're welcome to it. But, uh, uh, but I, I just... Uh, I just feel so strongly about this, and I appreciate all of your coming. Mr. Watson, I, I know I cited you in particular, so uh, certainly. I, I, I found a question in there, if, if, I, if I may. I want um, you to come to the appropriations hearing and make the same case for funding this, the, the roads and the bridges in the national parks. be happy to. Um, I hear you wholeheartedly, and I think raiding the Land and Water Conservation Fund to turn it into a maintenance fund is the wrong idea. But as I said, and I said it um, colloquially, as my dad said to me, when, you, when you're digging a hole, when you find yourself in a hole, stop digging. And that's the, that's the point, that's the thrust of my testimony, is we should probably stop acquiring more lands and stretching those maintenance dollars further um, rather than, than, than rating the fund for maintenance. But we need to do something. The, the National Park Service itself estimates that it needs $700 million a year just to hold the line, just to maintain the current backlog, not even to start drawing it down. So this is a significant financial issue. Um, you said who we are. This is who we are. And I couldn't agree more. And as we think about celebrating the, the National Park Centennial, what are we going to celebrate? Are we going to celebrate acquiring a lot of lands that are no longer maintained, that are, the roads are crumbling and inaccessible and wildlife habitat is deteriorating and we're literally poisoning our sequoias with wastewater or coordinated water? Or do we want to celebrate stewardship? And I think back 50 years to what the original um, forebears who, who passed this visionary law were thinking about, and I suspect they were thinking about stewardship and conservation not necessarily acquisition in the name of acquisition. Thank you.